All right, here we are, Metal Slug 2, the second Metal Slug. The one where they made a really bad programming error. Uh, hopefully this volume's okay. I just realized I didn't look at it. Looks like it should be good. All right, so after Metal Slug 1, people wanted more Metal Slug. They added character choices, which we're not going to bother with. Anyway, uh, yeah, pretty pretty traditional Metal Slug gameplay. Uh, however, uh, the Metal Slug games are not exactly uh, not exactly known for running at uh, super good frame rates. Uh, they made a programming error in this game where uh, every time it renders a lag frame, it instead renders two lag frames. So, uh, it runs like this. <laughs> um, the actual gameplay is still pretty fun. There's, there's lots of places where it runs okay. But there's also lots of places where you're, you're kind of kind of waiting for the things to happen. Gameplay-wise, compared to Metal Slug 1, there's there's not a whole lot of big changes. They got rid of the uh, the short little jump that you had if you tap the button in one, which is probably just for the better. Um, they added, or they changed the way the heavy machine gun works to make it a little bit smoother. Uh, they changed the flame shot into a real weapon. But, uh, other than that, it, it's pretty similar. Fortunately, the Neo Geo's sound processing is not run on the same processor as the rest of the game, so we get to just enjoy the music. And then we get to the first boss. Uh, grenades in this game still have a big vertical explosion. So you can kind of throw them such that you hit these soldiers as they're coming out of the doors. And then you don't, don't have to deal with them. Oh, I forgot to start the timer because I'm good at things. Timer's way over there. Mission complete. So we do get get Zombie Land now. Uh, two, they start having some pretty pretty ludicrous secrets Thank like this. Game does not have alternate paths. That Thank part you. right there makes it look like there might be, but it's just uh, just a prison. Shoot the shotgun and wait a couple seconds for the the bits to finish up. Thank you. Shotgun. It's 
steal this precious gem. If you want points? Please do not play Metal Slug games for points. Yeah, they, as I said before, they, they changed the flame shot into a real weapon in this game. Instead of however the hell it worked in one, it does damage on every frame of contact now. So, it makes it very powerful in some situations. Uh, there's a jump you can do over there for some point items to get a genie and stuff, but uh, it's a little tight. Not what I want to do right now. <laughs> Just blast everything and wait. Ooh, go back. And then we get to the boss. Now, this boss is pretty cool in my opinion. You do this tower climb and they give you this new vehicle, the Slugnoid. Uh, the Slugnoid, you have to be careful, because, uh, unlike the Metal Slug, while it has health, if you get hit, it loses one of its guns. And if you get hit a second time, it loses both of its guns, so it kind of loses all its attack power. So yeah, this, this charge is the main thing to look out for. You just have to jump when it's charging. Uh, it has a couple of things where it'll shoot spark balls at you. But other than that, you just kind of kind of shoot at it. Does this game have as stupid of a leeching spot as Metal Slug 1? Oh boy, does it ever! <laughs> but we'll get to that later. So this train stage is pretty uh, pretty straightforward into they added a lot of encounters to it in X. But there's several screens in this game that you just kinda run past. So these guys, as soon as they're dead, all the missiles they shot go away. So if you can kill them quickly, you don't have to deal with that. <clears throat> Zero. You can get a bunch of points if you make that jump a specific way. Uh, these fights right here are recurring, like thing they do in Metal Slug games where they take these tall tanks with the rolling bombs and they put one on each side. I think it's a really cool fight, but... Um, uh, this section's really annoying in 2. It's actually, like, in X, one of my favorite sections in any of the Metal Slug games, because they give you drop shot, and it's, it's really cool doing drop shot to kill these guys behind the, the pillars. The drop shot doesn't exist yet and they promptly forgot how to design any stage for drop shot after this exact segment. Okay, slug flyer. Uh, 
You can just charge through most of this stuff. It's all pretty soft and this will do a lot of damage. to the boss. This boss is interesting. It definitely lags a lot. Uh, when he's standing, you can generally take a safe spot under him like this. Uh, when you do that, he does this stomp thing immediately afterwards. And you can sit here as a safe spot. So you can kind of alternate between safe spots. Usually. Not always. And since... <laughs> Since I've got every effect on screen, this boss is going to take like 20 seconds to die. <laughs> Mission complete. <clears throat> this boss is an X. This boss is unchanged. None of the bosses are removed in X, but the stage Mission. one boss is randomly placed in another stage and the first boss is replaced with one of the bosses from Metal Slug 1 for some reason. I'm not, not real clear on why they made that choice. somewhere in that sequence, I don't know where. Alright, so somebody before asked about awful scoring sequences, and this game has the greatest awful scoring sequence, which is the part where you stand here and wait for these chickens to lay eggs. Yeah, buddy! So here, the chickens, they lay eggs, and sometimes the eggs become chickens. And if you chill for a while, you get a whole bunch of chickens. Um, also, in case this game didn't run badly enough, it runs much worse when there's a lot of chickens on screen, if you believe it or not. I know that seems unusual. But, uh, yeah, if you let this go for as long as it can, it gets to the point where the game's running at such a speed that one in-game second is 16 real-time seconds. Which is an absolute treasure. Anyway, I am not gonna, not gonna wait around for this to get really bad because it is quite boring. But I feel it's an important thing to talk about in this game because it's funny. Oh, and this game introduces Big. Uh, Big in this game is uh, kind of bad. Uh, because it takes away your ability to hit off angles with the heavy machine gun. <clears throat> but, you know, that's okay. So here, the, 
the rocket that it dropped there drops in a random spot. And fortunately, it dropped in a spot where I can jump over it. <laughs> so I don't really want it. I want this heavy machine gun ammo, but it's not a, a big deal. It's not something I'd like to get mad about. But it's a lot easier to clear these when you've just got a heavy machine gun that has a bunch of ammo instead of the like 30 rockets that you get. Big again. Uh, this is actually the only stage in this game where you can become big. It is programmed to not let you become big in any other stage. Uh, that is not true in later Metal Slug games. Generally, if there's enough food, you can do it. Being big has some neat impacts on your, your animations. It does make some guns slightly more powerful, I think. Um, anyway, then we get a slug. And we get to drive down this hill committing war crimes against innocent people by blowing up all of their houses. Anyway, on to the boss. This land boat. So yeah, while they didn't reach the uh, full levels of ludicrous boss design that they get to in like three, they definitely had uh, had the feel to get a little bit wackier with the bosses in two rather than them all just being variations on a tank or a helicopter. Unfortunately, Mission 4 is is the most extreme stage for lag. That's not to say the other stages aren't laggy. But we're through we're through the most intense parts of it. Uh, this stage is interesting. They swapped kind of in this stage and the previous stage how far in they give you the slug. This can be really tricky to execute just because of the lag, meaning like like there where I was running for several seconds without the ability to attack because I was switching, switching between the gun animation. But it's definitely possible to get through these segments pretty quick if you know what you're doing. Uh, unfortunately, I have a lot of residual knowledge from X. So I tend to just slow play and lowball some of this stuff. Because it's better than uh, 
better than dying a bunch of times. So yeah, there's so much lag, it gets real easy to get lost in what's going on. Alright, in this awful secret... That secret's made significantly less awful in uh, X since you have a uh, slug there to shoot angled shots. Almost walked into that bullet. They send subway cars at us. That's that's this unit. Driven by a pig, I guess. Normally I'd throw some bombs here to clean these helicopters up a little quicker, but I'm a little short on them right now since I had that death. Uh, those jumping knife guys, it looks really dangerous what I just did, but if you're crouching and don't move, they will not hit you. Just a little too far. Uh, I just saw the heavy unit already. Then the triple subway car. This segment really sucks if you're bad at mashing, and it kind of sucks if you're not bad at mashing. You can mash through that, but frankly, it's so annoying. I'd rather just use the grenades than attempt to do what they, they want you to do. <clears throat> and 
now we get the, the mad scientist's horrible creations. Weird, it threw that to the left. That's not how that really is supposed to work. Laser. So these things uh, only attack by exploding. So if they're not red, they can't hurt you. You can kind of take advantage of that. To get through this segment pretty safely. Also have quite a bit of delay between moving and exploding, so usually not too big of an issue. The slug, you can just run them over. They replace this with slug noids in uh, X, which cannot do that, but have other advantages. Piercer, which is a nice power up for these tanks. Thank you. Then we get the best power up in Metal Slug Norm, <laughs> which reverts our cannon back to the normal one so that we can actually shoot down the cannon and hit this boss with it. So uh, this boss has a few different attacks, some of which are... Oh, this attack is wacky because it like goes super fast when the lag is weird. to the last stage. Uh, the start of the last stage has a really, really dumb sequence. Um, you can slow play it, but it takes an eternity. So instead, I am going to abuse the starting invincibility to rush into a safe spot, which is right here. And as dangerous as this looks, it's way safer than anywhere else on this screen. These jumps are kind of tricky just because there's so much lag that sometimes... Oh, I'm surprised I didn't film that. There's so much lag that sometimes it's just impossible to tell what you're supposed to be doing. Alright. And since I didn't kill these sandbags, I can stand back here. This is where I'm going to start slow playing a lot of the game, because this is where there's a lot of changes between X and 2 that I'm not super familiar with. 
so. Wacky, wacky bridge time. Just use a lot of bombs to keep control of this thing because it's otherwise it's just like such a crapshoot what happens. And Alan. So Alan, uh, the big thing with Alan is you can only shoot straight forward or diagonally, diagonally up forward as long as you're above him. Uh, if you're below him, you can throw grenades, which is a little obnoxious. Uh, in general, he tries to avoid walking into your pistol shots if you're like this. Oh god, okay. And every once in a while he jumps up and tries to stab you, and then it gets really scary. <laughs> but he's he's dead. Definitely dead forever. These sandbag segments, I just, I do not know how to do cleanly in this game. In X, they give you, uh... Uh, they give you the lizard, iron lizard, and it makes quick work of all this. But here it's just pistol away, I guess. Is scary, except it's got a blind spot right in front of it, so you just get up there and do that, or it can die before it gets to that. Okay. Now we reveal the big plot twist that there's aliens! Like this rolling bomb, I'm gonna wait for it. <laughs> oh my, that's scary! Never seen this happen before. Oh man. Yeah, never seen the rolling bombs line up like that. I usually, I guess I just, I don't know why my damage output was low there. I was shooting a heavy machine gun. I want to get rid of this flame shot because I don't really know how to do this segment. This whole segment, they give you a couple uh, shotguns, which sounds really great, 
but it's really hard to keep control of the screen with the shotgun here if you don't know what you're doing, and I do not know what I'm doing. Believe it or not. Heavy machine gun's fine, so it just lets you shoot. One of these two guys is a shotgun. Crank gives you a shotgun, so definitely gonna avoid that. Must be these guys give you a shotgun? One of these two guys? Probably the top guy. Nope, not the top guy. guy might also be a shotgun, he might be out of machine gun though. Everything look as scary as I can. But crowd shooting is pretty safe against Mars people. In general. Last heavy machine gun that we hit in the stage. But I want to save it. Save it for a moment from now. These are the last, uh, last aliens before the final boss. Yeah, they, they really clean this stage up a lot in X, I think. Um, two, I mean, two, you can do this stage pretty quick if you know what you're doing. But, uh, again, I do not. Time to party! So this boss makes UFOs, and the UFOs are exceedingly random. So there is a good amount of luck involved. Uh, there's also luck in whether or not it gives you power-ups, so...
Uh, also, a change they made between this game and X is they made these lasers green instead of blue, which in my personal opinion made them a great deal easier to see. Oh, God. I used an audio cue for that, so because I shot it a few times, it was off. I burned through all my resources, so I need it to be a little generous here. I need it to give me regular UFOs with low health. That is not low health. It is a regular UFO, although he is crazy. Oh, uh, what do I do about this? Oh, God! Well, I don't know what I should have done about that pattern. I corner, got cornered and uh, then super lost. I have not gotten cornered that way uh, by the UFO. I, I mean, really, probably I should have just conserved my heavy machine gun a little bit more, but... The X version... I think the X version is more unfair. Uh, 2 tends to give you a lot more pickups and a more stable weapon set. Tanks are really good here. They, if they shoot these little UFOs, they kill them instantly, which is great because they have a ton of health. And you're pistoling them anyway. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. Cornering myself again. Pretty poor drop lock, I will say. Pretty unusual to get nothing from any of these UFOs that I've killed so far. It's also pretty unusual for one to fly that low. Well. There's a heavy machine gun that I can't get. too close to the sun. Didn't even need to jump there. I should have just walked off. But... Anyway, once you get into this position, it's, it's pretty much pretty much over. You just have to cannon shell these guys. Definitely not the easiest set of patterns the final boss has given me. Ugh. Independence Day! Ugh.
Mission complete. All right, well, there's not really much to this ending. It just shows you your continue stats, and then it goes through this uh, this rolling credits with no images. Big downgrade, big downgrade from one. Uh, two or X, they at least added some development art and stuff in the background of this, but uh, not here. So, yeah, we can change over any time. <laughs>